Welcome back, guys. <laughs> LCK 2019 Summer. You got a bit of a before the cast um, <laughs> preview there as uh, UCAL is going to pick up the MVP. We're actually just discussing who picks up the MVP here because uh, LS and I voted differently. I voted for UCAL and uh, LS, who did you vote for that, that I time I actually around? voted for Keen. And you know what, I'll tell you why. I, I think that um, he dismantled his lane opponent. Oh, absolutely. And it provides so much pressure relief and allows the jungler to basically just be elsewhere on the map and it, it really just makes the game feel like a 6v4. Um, the game it feels like to me was busted wide open very early on and even though Talia was a contributing factor to that, I think it's more impressive individually what Keen actually did no, I agree on his own in top lane. But I can understand UCAL getting it. Yeah, so. I, thought, I thought UCAL played, uh, played the game extraordinarily well uh, and also had a ridiculous scoreline towards the end, but uh, I think it was a toss-up in my yep. mind between the two of them, but uh, I'm glad uh, UCAL also gets it just because he didn't have very good of a, a spring season, and I think it's just fantastic that he's back as an Afrika Freaks fan. And speaking of which, we are back into Ban and Pick for game number three between Afrika and Kingzone, and Afrika are back to their old ways. The Zaya Ban coming in, we'll see whether it's going to be Sivir and Jax to follow it up. Yasuo now banned away by Kingzone. And Karthus gonna be banned away by Afrika on blue side. Sona now being banned away by Kingzone. Yeah, so not wanting any shenanigans, but definitely a uh, a turn from what we saw last time. Jax is still gonna be banned. Not wanting to see that as the counter pick coming out from uh, Rascal, or theoretically a flex towards Cuz. Yeah. Something in scrims is happening that I'm not aware of. I think. Aurelia is going to be banned on the red side, meaning Sejuani once again available without that Karthus option for Kuz to jump to. You know what I'd, I'd actually like to see against Sejuani is the Darken Bros. I would like Atrox and Ross to both be present in a game. We don't get to see that all that often, but I know that Ross, especially in scrims, yeah. February, March, April, Ross was one of the go-to answers to Sejuani, even if it never made the light of day. One thing that Cuz games. likes to play into Sejuani is the Aatrox, actually. So yep. we might see that Aatrox flexed into the jungle position, picked alongside the Silas here that can be flexed between top and mid. Haven't seen it uh, so much from uh, so, from Neon so far. The, the issue here is that, again, Rise beats Silas, he beats Aatrox. So unless the Aatrox does get flexed into the jungle, oh, wow. Rise is okay. a really strong pick. So really surprised why they're not, oh, man. Are we doing it? Do we get the AD Twisted Fate? So we have been seeing Twisted Fates around the world, but they have been going towards the more the AD. AP style. Oh, AP. Yeah, we've been seeing a lot of AP in competitive, a lot of AP. As uh, Neon's just Echo. cycling through a bunch of different champions here. Sorry, Olaf. Okay, Olaf going to be locked in. That means that we will be seeing an Aatrox and a Silas in a solo lane. And no flexibility here, really, on the King's own side. Neon's just really sad he doesn't get to lock in Nico. Yeah. Right now, that's actually what's going on. Nautilus now being banned away, which is really surprising because you have Silas, which does enjoy his ultimate. You already have Olaf. It's definitely a bit of a bewildering ban. Interestingly, have you realized who's made it all the way through the draft several times so far? Yumi. Yumi. And Lux. Yeah. And it feels like the Lux is the blocker pick to Yumi, so you feel like you can't pick Yumi as easily if Lux is still available in the counter pick, and no one's actually taken either of them off the board, and therefore none of them have been picked. Yeah. It's a really interesting scenario. Scalio is going to be the second ban here on the side of Kingzone, not wanting to see that added engage potential, and uh, of course, follow-up potential. If uh, the old Hextech ultimatum is employed after a hookshot, it is a pretty devastating combo, as Pike is taken off the board here by Tucson, uh, for Tucson on the Afrika side. So our bands are in, and Deft will be showing the hand of the first half. No, the bottom lane speak is, of the devil. Yeah, Yumi's yeah. going to be locked in. And now, does Aiming pick away the Lucian is my question. He needs to pick up the Lux, but is it going to be a Lux Lucian lane or the Lux Ezreal lane that has been successful here in the LCK? Ezreal's really strong against the Olaf, Silas, and Aatrox that Kingzone have already elected to lock in. I would actually like to see that a lot more. Gives them a lot more versatility with the Talia and it allows you to go into a more poke-centric, but it looks like they want to fight it straight up. Yeah. As they lock in the Varus. 
That is a hell of a lot of long range yeah. uh, for the Afrika side. Aiming can also go into that lethality route that you were talking about, right. and they can pair it with the Light Binding to do so much work. Deft is going to go back to his Ezreal. This is the least winning Yumi lane. So far in the LCK, I believe, hasn't actually picked up a victory yet. Unless I'm very mistaken, I like the Lucian lane a lot more, but we've seen that one dealt with as well. So Afrika Freaks actually looking like their composition has come through really nicely. Afrika, today can you win two? And then that says four winning streak, or give me a four game winning streak. That's what those two signs just said. But as you're mentioning the Ezreal and Yumi, one thing I want to note though is I said it earlier on in today's broadcast, Ezreal or Deft is probably the best Ezreal in Korea. Yeah, I think it's between him and Maybe Teddy. the world. Actually, yeah. he's probably the best Ezreal in the world. I, well, like in the LCK, we just play more Ezreal, right? Like, yeah. I, I think that Ezreal players generally are Korean because we just have Ezreal metas that just yeah. live forever. So I, I don't think that you'd be uh, too far off the money with that assumption. And so I, I, I've been uh, been a fan of Def's Def Ezreal since uh, long, long ago. He's just always been super good on that pick. Varus Lux, Talia, Sejuani, and Camille, extremely heavy amounts of engage and a lot of power just on their first items for all of these champions with an extremely explosive mid game that has late game scaling components to back it up, but is hurt a little bit if they don't have their summoner spells available as well as all the items necessary. Aatrox, Olaf, Silas, Ezreal, and Yumi definitely looking for team fights and fights in closed corridors. Yeah, you can certainly brawl with this combo. Let's see whether they can in game number three. Oh, oh no. Baby, the King's this is our fan. time. Yeah, the King's Own fans absolutely debated. Right, they're, we, they're, they're, they're just waiting. Well, I mean, we don't know quite how long this pause is going to go for, but Sorry. I did get some uh, mentions on Twitter after we were talking about Panic at the Disco earlier oh, I, on. Yeah, I got, a, I got uh, some DMs. Uh, we got a bit of a PC lag happening here for one yeah, of the players. Perfect. So uh, we'll see whether we are actually going to swap out that PC or just um, turn it off and on again. That would be my first recommendation. Uh, <laughs> the, <laughs> the one that generally works uh, most of the time. But um, yeah, going back to our, uh, our pop punk conversation that we were having earlier on from uh, the early 2000s, yeah. uh, which is hyper relevant, I assume, to the majority of our audience. In <laughs> fact, one of the members of the Panic at the Disco fan club, in fact, sent me a message on Twitter just to say that yes, Panic at the Disco fans do watch the LCK. <laughs> <laughs> so, very Panic much appreciated the disco is still uh, going hearing strong. that. Hmm? They're still going strong, yeah. I believe. Yeah, they are. And uh, they sort of transitioned a little bit because the lead singer, I've, uh, for some reason, his name is escaping me, but his voice is absolutely outstanding. Yep. And so now it's just pretty much a, a showreel of him you know, showing off how good his voice is. You know who has a phenomenal voice? Um, Aretha Franklin. No, no, he's another... Uh, Singer, uh, My Chemical Romance is singer. Yeah. Gerard Way? Yeah. I think that's his name? Yeah, he's also that's pretty beautiful. good at writing <coughs> TV shows. Oh, yeah, he made uh, the Netflix series, right? Yeah, the one about the, the superhero kids and stuff like that. He, that was actually a, uh, right. comic, a comic that he wrote. Right, right, right. Yeah. No, his, Super his, cool. His voice, if, if you guys are listening right now and you haven't listened to him sing without any instrumentals, Oh, is there one of those? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I haven't, I haven't heard an acoustic of his. Oh, yes. You can go on YouTube and find some of them. Some of the... Him and Haley Williams. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually can get me a little bit emotional. <laughs> his voice is very, very good. I get I get super affected by music, so... Uh, in fact, almost anyone can make me emotional <laughs> when it comes to music. And I love acoustic versions of stuff. Rusty and I used to have a relationship where we would just send each other the YouTube videos of acu acoustic music that we listen to throughout almost our entire time casting the LPL and OPL okay. together. Shoutouts to Rusty, currently at work at the OPL, as uh, King's owner currently at work in the enemy jungle. But uh, all the vision is going to get cleared out, but it was there to begin with, meaning that King's own aren't going to catch Afrika unawares. And in fact, Afrika respond yeah. with a red side invade. Many under and now Afrika, they're going to try to just avoid getting picked off or having anything catastrophic happen early on as King's on they were looking for some action not gonna find it cuz might start inside of Dread's red side jungle and then transition up and that would be towards the most volatile lane which is the Camille Atrox 
Yeah, that pretty comfortable sense. here for him to yeah. do so because they do have so much uh, vision available and you can see that Cuz has decided that it's even okay just to go for this Raptor first. Remember, Yumi, pretty strong. She gets two buttons at level one. As soon as you get two buttons at level one, you're feeling fantastic. It's why uh, Karma is so strong level one also. As Artus and Deft, they will be piloting this one, I believe, for the first time for Kingzone. In fact, yes, can confirm. Let's see how this one is going to go, whether they're going to be able to get Ezreal and Yumi on the board as far as a combo. And I want to see how Ezreal and Deft, or Ezreal and Deft, Deft and Tushin <laughs> they do pretty are going to well. be, <laughs> yeah. Uh, are going to be able to pilot this bottom lane because a lot of people are probably assuming that it might just get rolled over. Yeah. And so we'll see what they can manage to do to wiggle oh, their way out of it. From that, was, that was really good. That really prowled. How about this? How about this? All right. An Ash Ketchum Ezreal and a Pikachu Yumi. Oh, no. What you a need mod. Pikachu cannon, dude. What? Cannon is Pikachu. We already have. No, maybe Yumi's Pichu. Or, or Skitty. That's really good. Okay. Or, we need a Meowth Mew, skin. Mew. A Meowth skin and it's a little coin. Okay. The prowling projectiles, a little coin. I like coin. where you're going with this. Yeah. I really do. Although Mew looks like Yumi a little bit more, even though not actually a cat. Is Yuko Mew and Kane like fighting? Deoxys. True. You realize that? Yeah. What if this is actually just Pokemon? Uh, what's, what's Rascal, though? He's like something from Pacific Rim right now. Probably a new Pokemon. Is that a... Uh, Don't spoiler it. Oh, wait, is this the new the new metal evolutions that we're going to get? We're going full Digimon this time around this on it. Pokemon? This is it. We got, we got Sword and Shield spoilers happening here in the LCK broadcast. Stay yep. tuned for more. <laughs> this is the Nintendo E3 Direct. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Keen, not going to get infernally chained as uh, Cuz is coming in. If Keen continues this far up, it could be a huge problem. First Undertow is going to land. Hookshot, Keen's waiting for it. Has to flash beforehand. And Kingzone will take that. This may not be the keen dominance that we saw in game number two. He does have a CS advantage right now. He also still has two Corrupting Potions remaining. So he'll definitely be able to sustain in this lane a little while longer. Because like we said early on, he passed up towards the most volatile lane. Ends up finding a flash for himself. And now he's going for number two. Okay. It looks We're like going to stall it out three. just for a yeah. moment. Yeah, as uh, that knockup doesn't land there from Rascal. Waits for his third Q. Doesn't get it. Keen waits it out. Cuz is going to go for a back. They would have to do everything perfectly there to kill yeah. Keen. With Hookshot available, it's just yeah. really, really hard from this uh, point in the lane. And so Atrox actually can't do anything with that current lane state. Very surprised to not just see Rascal take a beating from the Camille and just push in the wave to get a crash. As we look down into bottom and Def and Tushin doing quite a good job here against the Varus Lux. And now this isn't a lane that you insta-win as a Yumi either, even though she is very strong. Aiming, taking a lot of damage here as a uh, Prowling Projectile does way too much damage, guys. It just does too much damage. My opinion. As uh, Tucson's just bopping around with his passive, getting things done. Deft, you can see, almost a permanent shield available. Is just uh, cast the you and me. Zumi's available as well for the sustain. Just hits the whole package. I was... Reading a Reddit thread the oh, other yeah. day, people said Yumi was not a high skill cap, a high skill cap support champion. I actually disagree. I disagree as well. I mean, why was she released with a 29% win rate? Well, I well, think that's people will say that it's because, because haven't learned how to play. Her yeah, yet. they don't. They didn't learn how to play. Her. I I think that she actually takes quite a lot of skill to use effectively. Which, I, I mean, yeah. some people would respond, oh, the same can be said for a lot of supports. No, not to the same degree. This champion will really appear to be a floating trash can. If uh, I think Assault's going to be in here. Yukal flashes to safety. Neon also. Aftershock no longer there. Teleport now on the Afrika side. Kuz still has flash. He's going to get one over the wall as Ooh. aiming teleported in from, uh, from back in base. And is going to land the piercing arrow, but unable to lock down the kill. Oh, now Dread spotted by this control ward. If that wasn't there, I have a feeling Cuz would have just straight up been dead. So Rascal's now winning in this matchup after a back. Didn't have to use the teleport either, as Arcane will have to utilize his. Okay, dust settling, but this game is way closer than game number two. Remember, it was about seven minutes in, and we were having conversations about, you know, go next. This time <laughs> around, we're 9.2 apiece. And uh, nothing really eventuating when it comes to the kills, but they have been attempted. 
still. Fast and loose style, but the answers here being held for both teams. This is so exciting. I'm actually really looking forward to seeing how Deft and Tucson navigate the rest of this laning phase as we move to ultimates. Yeah. The uh, last chapter is so powerful when you can land a guaranteed true shot barrage over two members, but the value you get out of the shield from Lux is gigantic when uh, when that ability is flying through as Rascal finds himself a cute knockout. So far, the game is definitely much slower than game number one or two. And Atrox not really accomplishing all that much with the advantage she was handed early on. Camille's Flash is going to be up here just a moment's notice. I just think as soon as Rascal isn't straight up losing the lane, though, you're feeling pretty happy. Yeah, probably feeling much better. Yeah. Prowling Projectile once again goes out, but not wanting to clear up too many minions that Death wants to get his, get his hands on. Olaf still up here towards the top side of the map. As uh, Kuz notices that there's no vision, Rascal comes on in to see whether there is a control war towards the top side. Of course, not going to be there, but the Olaf not going to find an inroad as the lane is pushed very far forward here. And this is more of a, a Rascal champion, top lane Camille. Let's hold my thought. There's the abscond landing. Neon thinking about the ultimate. Not going to be able to find it, as there it is! Glacial Prison comes out, but the exchange of kills. Junglers, the only ones remaining. As Dread was able to finish off the mid laner for Kingzone, but with how that lane was going, you'd have to say it works out pretty well for yeah. Kingzone. And Kuz is also the one that got the first blood. That's true, yeah. So, quite good for them there. Clown Dragon being the first one of the, dra uh, first one of the game is... Not the super highest priority, but if Afrika wanted to look to capitalize on it, now would likely be the time after blue. Also having extra movement speed for three melees that want to be getting in there and amongst it with uh, Yumi's on their back. Actually, mo movement speed is uh, at a premium this game. Kuz moves on over. They don't want to give away their blue buff that is taken by Dread, though. Kuz not able to get anything done. Yukal made his way through the jungle, surfing on some rocks. We're going to have a look at this one one more time. Very chaotic gank in the mid lane. Yep. Yukal trying to bait this out as he moves into Neha, knowing that Dread is coming over the right-hand side, but they were matched. And so in the end, Kuz ends up getting the first blood kill right there. Very, very close. As, yeah. uh, aiming and Senen. They got altered from both members of King Zone, but you've got now Dread moving his way forward. Doesn't have the ultimate, piercing arrow goes wide, as does the light binding, and the back button is pressed by the Sedge. And I don't think we're going to find too many ganks here onto the Ezreal Yumi. Very, very safe here on the bottom side. Another prowling projectile as uh, Senin goes down pretty low. Doesn't have that shield available, but as more points go in it, it's just so dangerous as now Dev doesn't find the Mystic Shot. Arcane Shift is good though, Winter's Wrath doesn't Whoa. do enough as that ult. That's huge at low levels, but not enough to kill Deft. And it's really close. He's almost, he was almost within smite range. Yeah. Of just being able to be smited. And so, Dread with a couple of missed opportunities so far this game. Very, very close calls. As now, Clown Drake looks to be on the agenda. Keen. He's walking down. Yeah, they want to try and guarantee this. this. But actually, Kane's just going to waste some time. The Aatrox is going to walk back to lane as well, but has teleport in hand. Could have matched uh, Kane's presence in the fight pretty instantly. As now Kingzone has started off this dragon. Apparently, the advantage is there for Kingzone as uh, Kuz locks down another Rift Scuttler. Prowling projectile lands onto Senen. Comet just does so much work onto the Yumi. As the Freak of Freaks once again pushed away in this lane. But you can see Aiming's been farming very, very well. On this Varus, true shot, Barrage, Senen. He finds out that uh, Ezreal also does a lot of damage with his ultimate as it cruises on past into the fountain. And now with the crash, they have tempo advantage because looking to convert this into a Cloud Drake capture. Yeah, should be able to get this one for free as well. Neon had that mini wave in position and Yukal was back in base. So taking advantage of a reset timing. 11 minutes on the clock, Shelly's been alive for a minute. No one has looked at her, at her just yet. Freak are now moving up to see whether they can uh, challenge the vision that is already in the form of two control wards for King Zone. Yukal just looking for any wards around. Manages to find himself one. 
The impressive thing this game, though, is that Rascal is not hemorrhaging in the top lane. Yeah. And so that is a very, very big upside. The really interesting thing to me is the fact that Jeff didn't take teleport. When you've got Yumi, uh, the, the teleport yeah. is so much more high value, especially in the early levels. Tucson gets a free back, back at the same time as Def, if that is utilized, but needed to have the cleanse to play more aggressively. And now a free can move over to Shelly and take her down without a fight. Yeah, at 12 minutes too. Yeah, this is really nicely done. Plates so. will go their way, and they can even shove them towards the top side Look where Rascal rotation. is absent. Yeah, this is a really, really powerful rotation right now. They know that the enemy bottom lane resetting and is very slow at responding to this and so they should be able to get all five plates yeah this turret here. is going down yeah. four members up here Keen was even waiting in the wings to see where the rascal waited underneath the turret true shot barrage to clear out the minions but it's just not enough as uh, we're looking to race here on the bottom side death will get a lot of plates that is good news for king zone but first turret blood and all of the plates and tempo advantage go over to Afrika. it's a huge win for them as they will be able to pull back the gold lead once this goes down. As you can see, now 300 gold ahead of King's Own. It's not a big lead by any means, but now they're looking to push further forward. Shelly will get another charge, and Cuz's time is wasted as he heads towards oh. the top side. Okay, that's the combo. Immediately wow. evaporates the Aatrox. Is now a teleport towards the top side. Neon looks for a Chains of Corruption as now Weaver's Wall comes on in. Oh, that dodge with the ult from Keen out of the way of the Chains of Corruption, and now they should be able to get more damage onto this turret after the two kills, and this game is starting to snowball. And you can just see that Rascal wasn't expecting what was coming. He had his flash available, but he got hit by everything, and then Cuz was really quick to follow him to the Death Realm. Yeah. It really is one of those moments, it looks like those movies, almost comical, where the, yeah. the piano falls out of the sky and just smacks them. I think that was a uh, that was a uh, zombie kill of the week in Zombieland. Uh, oh, really weird. He doesn't get the last plate or the turret. Yeah, just letting it kill the minions. You can see the question mark things. I don't think that that's signaling that he's missing. I think they're wondering what was he doing. That yeah, was, maybe. You see those in solo keys quite often. You can just see Rascal. You can see by the way that Afrika is posturing that they're intending for something like this, and he's not playing around it. No. based on where he was standing. And so, even though there's other Kingzone members on the horizon, they're just not able to be here in time. And also, Ezreal doesn't have teleport. He took the cleanse primarily just because the Varus, the Lux binding, and also even the Sejuani ultimate. You want to be able to have that for the mid-game, late-game transition. It's going to be more valuable than the teleport, and I think they managed the laning phase phenomenally. But Afrika now find themselves to 1.3k gold lead. Yeah, they do. This is not insurmountable by any means for King Zone. However, this is a snowball composition from Afrika. We already saw what they can do when they have tempo. Talia, especially just as a champion in general, plays so well if you have positive tempo in a game, just because Weaver's Wall can A, move you from A to B very quickly, but also block off turrets. So in these uh, siege scenarios, it is very, very valuable. Deft Arcane Shift gets a lot of value there. Also on the bottom side, dodging out of the way of the Light Binding as aiming's just taking Abuse here from the Yumi. And Senate, Lucent Singularity flies forward as our Afrika were moving Yukal and Dread down. No Weaver's Wall. As Kuz just uh, using that undertow, scouting things out. Rascal taking down a Raptor Camp, just trying to get himself further ahead in the CS department. There's the last chapter as aiming changes position. Growling projectile, lots of damage. Undertow lands onto him. There's no devour this time. As that is a huge amount of damage. It is going to be a one for one though. Oh. As the glacial prison comes in. Senate flashes at the right time and now teleports from both teams are coming in. Not able to get there though. That is uh, Rascal teleporting down. They will be able to finally get this turret. Kingstone going one for one is not what they wanted. With that a, another really, really questionable teleport. Because he definitely did not need to leave top lane for okay. all of this. He's trying to find his way in. Fred's volley doing some damage here as Dread has to use the Arctic Assault defensively. Tower is a hand's breadth away from going down anyway. The King Zone once again cannot find any targets for this aggression, and it's Afrika that are able to get everything when they make moves, and yeah. they're staving off King Zone at every turn. And here's the byproduct of Atrox's teleport right now, is there is a giant minion wave that will just be stockpiling and go completely unused, and it's going to create a really bad lane state when there's no neutral objectives available on the map 
after this Clown Dragon goes down. And yeah, it's gonna be the second one for Kingzone as an open Drake will spawn next. But there's so much experience in gold that is just waiting to be funneled into one of the primary carries in top now. Yeah. Well, we'll see who goes up there to get it. I have a feeling that uh, Kane's gonna want it, but Yukal is vying for that position. As we have a look at this one more time, the light binding was good. Yeah, and light binding was really good. Kingzone are quick to turn this around. Watch the minimap as the, as aiming ends up going down, as they're not able to really get Senna. It was a good Lux ultimate, and also really close call on Senna and able to flash out. So right here, you can see that Camille is teleporting to the north, but there's not a reason to bring Atrox down, because look at the movement speed from Deft and Nehyun. They're easily able to escape the Talia, or at worst case scenario, you call in Atrox after Talia commits yeah. and isn't able to turn around. So they wasted Rascal's teleport, and they also took a lot of golden XP away from him. Well, Rascal now has found himself dread, doesn't get that knock up so the Infernal Chains doesn't pull back, so not a lot of damage here onto the Sejuani this time around. He does already have his Zeke's Convergence, so actually a lot of armor here, 4 zero, 0 just quietly. For the Sejuani, his aiming takes half of his health bar just from the Harascals that uh, Deft and Tucson have. Yumi is still very, very strong, but we haven't seen it work with the Ezreal so far. Kane coming down bot side, has Dread there in his back pocket, Rascal. This is not old Aatrox, he's not going to be safe if he waits under here and Dread shows his face, and uh, intelligently Rascal's going to back away. Now at this point, it just okay, comes. another oh, last man. chapter as aiming's going to fall down very easily, but death follows. <laughs> right afterwards, and now Tucson, it's the Yumi treatment, two for one special. Every time, whoever you're attached to goes down and there's no one else around. Afrika, on the bottom side, take a turret, but the top side, Outer had already fallen in favor of King Zone. This game stays close. Afrika with a little bit of a lead. Killing Yumi is like killing Honeyfruit in a river. Yeah, once, once, you, once you get the yeah. first one, once yeah. you pop, you can't stop. Is what you're saying. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> she's like popping bubble wrap. She's actually a, she's Pringles. <laughs> oh, man. Well, Afrika looking for more turrets here as well. I feel like that analogy works for that also. Seismic shove doesn't find the mark. Senin, good shield. Stops that true shot barrage from really hurting. Have a look at this one one more time. We do see the power of the Yumi, but uh, Deft uh, took a lot of damage also. Yeah, he took quite a bit of damage, and Yukal was just there waiting in the wings on the right-hand side. Talia's wall looks very nice, by the way. I just want to point that out. They need to do like a Mario Kart Rainbow Road <laughs> type thing where she just makes oh, Rainbow that'd Road. Oh, that would be so cool. Right? That would be like Arcade Talia. Make it happen. <gasps> it's so easy. We're always just spitting out skin ideas. Oh, how are we good at this? How are we so good at this? Know. Have we ever made a bad skin idea? I don't know. Probably. I don't think so. I think we're perfect. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's the best way to think about it, right? <laughs> okay, we're prowling in the mid lane as uh, Deft and Deuce is pretty comfortably able to deal with minion waves. Freaker though, they will be able to get this. Rift Scuttler moves towards topside and threaten Neon. Yukal feels like he's everywhere on this map despite having Ignite instead of Teleport or something like that. Exactly what you want out of the Talia. As Keen is even here, setting up for some sort of gank. Us has Ragnarok, but he's not exactly a tanky boy on this Olaf. At this point, Crowley Projectile once again, but there's the Arctic Assault. Us taking a lot of damage. Neon now has a Glacial Prison. Tucson is outside of depth. The you and me not able to be utilized. The CC bar was too strong. Keen goes down very low, but the damage is done. No kitty cat on a book to help out mm -hmm. this King's Own squad. But Neon still sitting on that Glacial Prison. That can be very, very powerful as Dread used his in the last fight. And here we're seeing the evolution of the LCK now commencing. The Nayram mm -hmm. is on our screen right now. So you're going to need to sit back and wait. This is going to last a while. Yeah. Weaver's Wall comes in. Rascal and Def stay on that side. Arcane Shift gets Ezreal to safety. As Neon throws in the Glacial Prison, they do find the backline of Senan able to get himself out. The last final spark is so strong. It goes over and three Keen people lives. and Afrika just clean up. Keen going to be okay one more time. And even Senan is going to survive after the flash. And things are definitely looking a little bit rough right now for Kingzone because now is around the stage of the game where the Camille starts really getting out of control. The Talia, we can already see the items on her. She has the Oblivion Orb and the Luden's Echo. Almost has 
I think that actually you just get Mage Eyes at that point instead of the Blasting Wand. You're at 9 stacks, you're almost at 10, you're going to get the passive. Yeah, and he also was playing with so much confidence yeah. in the last game, you may as well follow that one through. Because I like the idea from Neon, but Dread with the block on the Arctic Assault was so pivotal to stop him from following up and deleting the Lux, who then has shield after shield. And uh, there was just no way to lock them down. And at this point, I mean, you can see that Kingzone, they were clearly able to repel the minion wave and save the turret without taking that team fight, but they bit off a little bit more than they could chew, and now they find themselves down 3,000 gold. And with an Ocean Dragon being the one on the map, it's not something that, even if they manage to win it, is going to magically increase the percentage chance that they can win this game. This, however, is not an unwinnable game state no, from uh, the King's own side. It's not like game number two. So they can still make their way back in, but Afrika have just been making the smarter decisions. Right now it feels like it's not necessarily King's are out of it, but if Afrika still play the way they've been playing throughout the rest of this game, it's not likely that they're able to answer just because of the form that Afrika are in here today. At this point, Deft is trying to continuously farm up. Well, he goes red. We've found another ultimate as that last chapter was not the one that you wanted. Neon is going to go golden, but the Olaf is just obliterated inside. The Hextech ultimatum, Afrika will take an afterthought turret. Kingzone losing their jungler and their AD carry. It's not a lot of poke if Afrika decide to start off this Baron. They are definitely turning their sights towards it. Blue Trinket Ward ends up being eaten, and there should be realistically no response from King's own. Atrox can go over that wall, or he can just go around it. Yeah, walks around, Neon comes in, but hits, gets hit by the Light Binding. I don't think they're going to be able to grab this, as the Smite is just too strong. Neon, Winter's Wrath is there, Final Spark obliterates the Silas. Senna's actually doing a lot of damage, does have himself the Athena's on Holy Grail at the moment, after his Frost Fang yeah. upgrade. And let's just take another look at this. Ezreal can't afford to go down, but... They managed to land everything on him, and he's just annihilated from the fight at the very beginning. He's the most important part of the King's Own team composition because of how slippery he is against the skill shots on the side of Afrika and how much damage he can actually offer. So when he goes down early, it's near impossible for Aatrox to get any of his resets off. Olaf is basically a sitting duck, yep. and Silas is just a glorified Olaf at that point. So. Pretty impressive that Afrika managed to lock down the Ezreal as well when he has Cleanse, took that over the Teleport, and Mikhail's Crucible is item number one for Tucson as well. So that's the uh, the choice he made. That's what he's going to turn his Chalice into instead of the Athenes on the Yumi that a lot of Yumis have uh, have been picking up. He's going for his Ardent Sensor now, but hasn't quite completed it. Now King's own diving on forward. There's the last chapter onto aiming. Chains of Corruption do go wide. Lucent Singularity's there to slow them down as Cuz looks for his opportunity. Dread is just gigantic though, dives into the back line. Has so much control, the flash out from Depth. Now trying to turn it. Oh. The initial salvo, not quite there, but Yukal finds it with a flash in the end. Trusha Barrage over three. It's just not doing the damage that you want from it. Three items there onto the Ezreal, but he's gonna need so much more to stop this five-man push from Afrika with a Baron buff from locking down this inhibitor turret, and it's just not there, so this is gonna go down. Afrika Freak's dominant. 8,000 gold in the lead at 25 minutes. And at this point, with the mid inhibitor busted wide open, 7.5k gold lead almost now for Afrika. Things are looking pretty dim. Oh yeah. Right now, and there's no gin in this game. No, it is, uh, it's not a good time. Four King Zone. The lights to go out, as that's gonna be another turret falling. And if you're a King Zone fan and you're wondering, well, how do we win this? Well, Death has to go hero mode. Oh, that's yeah. the only way for them to come back in. They don't really have pick potential. Their team composition is so face up and also immobile. And now we've got another last chapter. Kingsway might actually have found the team fight that they're looking for. Senen stunned for a really long time, and that's going to be the hijacked prison to come out. Two quick picks. It is the dragon going over to the Afrika Freaks, but that's all they're able to uh, get from that. And now, Kingzone with some reset opportunity. It is still a game well and truly in Afrika Freaks' hands. This is a good sign, though. We're taking another look at how this all transpired, and it's Deft and Tushin getting a little bit over eager. You can see Yukal on the right-hand side, Dread with the flank onto Deft, actually able 
to land the Sejuani ultimate. I really thought that Kuz was going to be able to body block that, but apparently not so. Kushat Barrage doesn't come out until a little bit later, and now we're cutting straight to the dragon fight. And Afrika should never actually eat this dragon. They should have retreated through the south because the open dragon, let's say that King Zone gets it. What realistically is the percentage increase that they're going to magically win the game because they got that dragon? It's probably less than a percent. So the thing is, Deft got both of the kills and now finishes yeah. off his third item. So Ardent Sensor now being built up. There are, there, are, there are schools of thought where pumping a little bit more gold into the Ezreal at this stage of the game is going to help despite the deficit. Yeah, but I, I mean, see what you're saying. the only chance. Yeah. Afrika Freaks didn't need to make that decision, but this is also not going to hamstring them too. Still have a massive advantage. Two items now on the Camille. Still also has her stopwatch. And yeah, Sejuani a is a super monster. Quicksilver Sash completed for Varus. I really like that as the third item of choice. He knows that he's already so unnaturally strong. He doesn't need to keep ramping damage. Damn, that is so many projectiles that just came out of uh, what felt like, like two that. champions. It's like dodgeball. Yeah. I don't know whether learning how to dodge a wrench is actually going to help you in this scenario, though. Is that a Heimerdinger joke that I'm missing? No, that's a dodgeball joke. Oh, dodgeball jokes? Yeah. You gotta go back and watch that movie. It's a real good one. Okay, okay taking mood of damage. Uh, that is the one lane that they have pushing in. Rascal's dealing with it at the moment. Prowling projectile coming forward. They're looking for Dread. Wanting to get rid of that engage potential from the Sejuani. There's the Weave as well. Neon steals away a Chains of Corruption. It's going to trade. That's the final spark, dodged out of the way. Last chapter not doing very much work here is aiming. He's going to get snared up alongside Senna, but you can see the value of that shield. It's just gigantic. So many big buttons now on cooldown, but Afrika still able to put on the pressure. This is Afrika actually managing this relatively poorly. They, they could just be having Kane split down in bottom because there's no re reason to rush the top tier three turret, but they're forcing the agenda. We're going in once again, cause Ragnarok has to be popped. He's got flash. He's going to survive the Yumi, able to use the zoomies to keep him alive. And this is just really good for King Zone because of the level disparity. The minions keep coming into King Zone. They're getting experience. They're getting goals. And they're right. continuing to close the gap ever so slowly. So Afrika, they're putting themselves oh, in the bad They have turned it around he, though. Yeah. Lance the hook shot. Okay, we're looking for it, but it's not going to happen. There's the ultimatum. Straight into that stopwatch that you were talking about earlier, and that's going to make it a skewed fight. Neon off to the side, Def trying to dance forward. Doesn't have a Yumi inside him. Yumi's already dead. True Shot Barrage flies Whoa, in. That's an instant nice. cleanse, cleanse from Def, but it's not enough. The flash light binding's too good, and this game's going to be over. The Afrika Freaks 2 1 over King Zone, and Summer just got a whole lot more interesting. With our two blue teams yeah. making their way towards the top. Summer just got really chaotic, and this is really exciting. It's really hard to tell who is the best team in LCK. A lot of people, I mean myself included, thought it would be King Zone coming into today and winning today's game. Oh, yeah, they should have been the favorites moving into this. Uh, and after game number one, you have to feel like that as well. I mean, Afrika in game number one, this could have been a 2 0 if yep. they didn't donk off at the Baron. That was that was <laughs> the real tragedy right there. So that's the three I mean, game series. Yeah, pulling themselves together after that, though, and uh, knowing that they made a mistake, that's why right. they lost, and then moving into such a dominant game number two. Really impressive stuff here for the Afrika Freaks. Yukal, the man in the middle, a fantastic game number three as well. It's uh, just a team effort here for the Afrika Freaks, though. Super impressive play from these guys. And uh, Dread's come into his own on the jungle performance. I know that uh, Sejuani's uh, it's a champion that is very, very strong at the moment, but he was at the right place yeah. every point of that game. Absolutely every point of the game. And that is, uh, that is not something that our new mechanics junglers have been great at, you know? This right. is just good pathing and heads up play around what the moves the opponent are gonna make. Right. It felt like Kingsman were just red in game number three. Kingsman, they're gonna have to collect themselves. It's not the end of the world. Absolutely they did lose not. today, but they can definitely bounce back from this and it's not gonna be the biggest ordeal. I will be honest though, that their drafts today, I know that you like their team composition number one, team yeah. comp, but I felt like each one was susceptible to stuff. 
and it Especially was a little bit concerning. Two. Yeah, but I do like that they are trying to just force their own play style. Yeah. I think that's how you win, right? It's like make your opponent play your game and see if they can keep up. Because what that's doing is pressuring. That's pushing your opponent to do stuff because they know that you're going to pull the trigger whenever you can. And that's exactly what our Kingzone seem to be doing in the LCK. And Afrika, the first team to actually answer with power of their own. It was offense answered with offense, and that's exactly what we want to see. This is the evolution that a lot of people wanted from the LCK coming into summer. We'll see what will be in store now for both of these teams moving forward as, like you said, a lot of things just get a lot more exciting. Yeah, the thing that's really interesting uh, is moving on to our second series of the night. Even more information will now be gleaned. SKT make their way back onto the onto the rift, or should I say limp their way back onto the, the, the rift after a couple of losses yeah. against both of the teams that we just saw. Afrika and Kingstone really paving the way for a new look LCK. Right. And SKT, can they make that work against Sandbox in our next matchup? Because Sandbox are another team Sandbox that aren't afraid really to, make, uh, yeah. to make plays. And Sandbox was looking really strong in spring in round one yeah. of the split. And then they began to fall off. But so far, they're looking pretty clean here in summer 2019 as well. Uh, is it going to be the Achilles heel to SKT is the other question. But some highlights from this last series the last game, in fact, as our Cuz was able to get that first blood. But as you can see, Dread's always there. I don't know whether there will be a highlight that Dread is not a part of. Really impeccable play from the jungler of the Afrika Freaks. But Keen once again had a standout performance this time on the Camille. Not a lot of champions he's not incredibly good at. Diving on with the Hextech ultimatum there in the back line, getting rid of Cuz pretty comfortably. And this was the series of plays that really got the ball rolling for Afrika. This is where Kingzone, they end up killing, aiming down there, but then they make the call to have Atrox come down as well, and it just really doesn't make any sense. And, and then in this replay, so this is Def going really over eager. And Yukal just being there on the right hand side and quick to punish. And it felt like whenever Dread wasn't there, Yukal was there yeah. to make his way in. Really good team play here from Afrika Freaks. As once again, it's another team fight and another Lux looking like a mid laner, to be honest. Senate really ripping through the King's Zone members who just didn't have a lot. When it came to Magic Resist at that stage, and that means that ultimate is going to be doing a bunch of work. This was a good fight from King Zone, but yeah. it just wasn't enough. This was Afrika taking a dragon that they shouldn't. And Kingzone looking like they were going to get a little bit of a break. And right here, it's surprising that they handshook the fight onto Keen, especially because they were stabilizing the top turret. But then the stopwatch and Keen's damage is way too much, and that spells the end. Yeah. The flash binding was, uh, was a good cleanse from death, but you can't cleanse death. And uh, that was exactly what happened and exactly how this game ended. And Freak of Freaks looking real good. <laughs> oh, you go, never <laughs> We need to get a translation on what he just said there. Oh, my goodness, you go. Well, the damage. Ezreal's uh, pretty good. Yumi actually hits. She hits like a truck too. Yeah, I mean that was that was 100 percent of where Kingzone were going to win this game yeah. was uh, through the Ezreal, Ezreal and Yumi. the Yumi. Right. However, it just wasn't enough because top side of the map you can see the gigantic damage advantages here for the Talia. Yukal on perfect comfort, winning two games in a row on his favorite champion must feel fantastic. And Keen, I don't think it matters which champion he's on. He's just really good at League of Legends. Yeah. And so now, if you are an Afrika fan, you're probably feeling pretty good as summer does drag on because yeah. they are looking nothing like Spring Afrika. No, and uh, I think a lot of that can be attributed to, to Nofe. He's got a more involved role now yeah. as uh, it's been a bit of a promotion session as I love moving up um, past that head, co head coach role to more of a managerial position. And Nofe has a lot more of an ability to control this team, and it's looking fantastic, actually. Uh, and you can see how much he cares, of course. I mean, we yeah. talked about the SKT series, uh, the fact that he cried afterwards uh, quite a few times, but it really does show that this Afrika team are feeling really, really good. We'll check out who the MVP is 
I think uh, Dread deserved it. Yeah. But uh, I'm not entirely sure what uh, what the go is going to be. It is going to be him picking that one up, but there are a lot of good performances here from the Afrika Freaks in the last two games. 509, 100% kill contribution at 15 minutes. He'll be feeling pretty damn good to give it to Dread, and that's one more. 400 points now for this guy. I think he now is in that sole uh, number one position once again, like he was at the beginning uh, of the week. Yeah. And I mean, he's been doing a lot better so far and in today's series. He had some questionable passing at times, but especially in game number three, I mean, he had a phenomenal performance. Yeah. So you can't really fault him for that by any means. His ultimates were really, really on point. Yeah, he was magnetizing those things. They really, were really good play. Yeah, yeah, and he is. He is indeed in first place, so. And the only member of the Afrika Freaks up here as well, so really, really good stuff here from Dredd. Just shows how much he's been carrying the early games and then being able to transition them nicely into late games because you can't win an MVP if you don't win the game. And Afrika are showing that they are using their early pressure jungler in ways to actually win games. And uh, that's four MVPs so far really does sort of tell the tale of the tape as far as how Afrika have been winning. Yeah, it, it really is. And Afrika, I mean, you have to feel really good having UCAL back, and also Keen just being able to be on a different planet than all the other top laners. And I mean, nothing's game. changed, right? Keen yeah. is still Keen, still ridiculously good, the and we are going to be out of here from uh, the MVPs from this Afrika victory. So let's throw it over to Jisung some translation. Thank you very much, guys. This is Jisung with the Infamous Translation, and we're going to be here with Yuka, Dread from Afrika. Yuka, you are one of the most hyped players in LCK, and your performance is also on point to how they feel right now. Well, before this game, I gave a word to Deft, and I'm really happy that we were able to pick up the win. And now we're on a winning streak, so it feels really nice. Yeah, you did mention that you really want to hunt down the Apaka today. Did you have a lot of confidence about yourself? Yes, I did. I had the feeling that if we just do as we always do in the uh, practice game, we knew that we are going to win. And Dread, today's game is really entertaining for the fans, so did the players also enjoy playing in it today? Yeah, it was exciting for the players as well. Game number one, it wasn't easy. However, game two and three, it was on the African side. So the bot lane competition was that a counter for Sona. We did predict that Sona will be the key champion uh, for Sona in King Zone. So Talia was the uh, counter champion for it. And you went really early with Jai. So was that planned? Well, if you go to a late game against Sona, you're gonna lose. So I had to calm. I had to thought that I have. I shouldn't die and just build up Jai as soon as possible. And you also was giving up a huge wave in mid lane and just rolled to the bot side and picked up two, two kills. Well, I thought that well, losing those waves doesn't really matter. Instead of just picking up those kills in the bot lane, we're going to win the game. So I just made the decision to go down to the bot lane. Well, it is first on the champion, but I cannot say roaming is always perfect, but so today it worked out really well. Dread. A lot of fans are looking forward to seeing you versus Cousin Jungle. I felt really nervous. However, based on the nervousness, actually I was able to kind of show great plays. And the synergy between you and Yuko was really awesome. So did it change a lot compared to the Spring Split? Well, just, it's about the mindset. All the players have a different mindset mindset for Summer Split. During the Spring Split, when we were on the 8th place, we had the confidence that we will be able to pick up better results compared to the Spring Split. Game number three. The highlight was about lending your ultimate on Azrael. So let's go through some of the clip together. Was that a predicted one?
Well, I just... With my instinct. Did you follow your feeling? Yes, I did. So, Africa, you guys are on a three games winning streak. Yuka, I think you were one of the focal players in your team. And especially your mic check. Boosting up the confidence of your teammates is also the gem of LCK currently. But Keen also said, you're just being too fake because you love all the attention. Do you agree? I mean, Keen is picking on me too much. However, well, I'm a bit exaggerating, but I'm just enjoying playing games nowadays, so I'm always very excited. And Dread, you always follow him really well. What are your thoughts on Yuka's mic check? I love his tension. However, he is sometimes too excited, so I think he had to improve those things. Yuka, your next opponent will be Sandbox. Any words? Any words on them? Sandbox is a similar team to Kingdom, so it's gonna be a very entertaining one again with a lot of skirmishes and fights. I think if you make mistakes, you're gonna win, and if you kind of punish the mistakes, you're gonna win. So this will be the end of the interview with Yuka, Dread from Africa Freaks, and I'm gonna pass it back to our casters. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jisun, and also thank you so much to Yukal and Dredd, who played out of their minds here today. A fantastic series between Kingzone and Afrika Freaks, and this has a lot of standings implications. Yeah. Because now you've got two teams sitting on one loss apiece at the very top of the table, and you can see Kingzone aren't knocked down. In fact, that was three teams, guys. Of course, Griffin still up there. As, uh, man, the top three, possibly even top four, if Sandbox can come away with a win. Looking mighty spicy. Interesting. I thought that the the points don't matter if a team has the same score in the head-to-head -head against you. Uh, what? Right? Shouldn't Kingzone be down and then a... Sh Kingzone should be third and Griffin should be first. Right? It's, actually, not it's, it's a little bit weird because uh, Kingzone and Griffin haven't actually played yet. So there is no head-to-head -head no, availability. So Kingzone they're both Africa. first. Oh, no, 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 so Afrika have lost an extra game. They've played an extra um, three, series. One, three, one. Yes, an extra 3-1 is uh, on Afrika. Oh, so yeah. therefore, the point system is going to put King Zone ahead. Plus four versus plus three. Guys, we do have about a 20-minute break, and then we'll be, at, we'll be back for SKT versus Sample.